no, this wasn't a game changer. No. And they needed a game changer, and it wasn't. This was not a pre-election budget. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on. I think Labour originally set their hair running. There could be a May election yeah, because yeah. they want the Tories to be look scared. So then yeah. they can, you know, the Daily Mirror can dress someone up as a chicken and yeah. chase the Same Prime old. Minister around um, Westminster. But I think actually the Tories are quite happy for a bit of this May narrative to keep going because that means Labour may expose more of their policies and show more of their hand about what they're going to put in their manifesto. Yeah. All this gamesmanship doesn't mean a row of beans to anyone watching no, or listening to GB News. It's West Westminster Parlour Games. It is. Meanwhile, real people are worried about their pensions. Yes. They're worried about their mortgages. They're worried about making ends meet. And for those ordinary folk, Carol and Andrew, there wasn't a lot in this budget, I have no. to say. Her, the, Nas- the National Insurance Plan, oh, right, is going to put more money in people's pockets. But it's dishonest for him to say that because council tax is going up a lot and also a lot of people, because of the freeze in personal allowances, which you can explain to us, Liam, means a lot more people are going to be going into higher tax brackets. I remember I the first time I started talking about fiscal drag in the GB yeah. newsroom and, and, and Eyes pe- blazed people over. started to shout, what do you mean? What is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Are you dragging me into another room or something? But let's just think, if the, 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 the personal allowance is 12 and a half grand, right? Yeah. It stays at 12 and a half yeah. grand. If your wages go up from 10 grand to 13 grand, yeah, that, that doesn't mean that you keep all that money because yeah. you're dragged into tax. becoming a taxpayer. It's the same further up the income scale. We're now seeing people with, you know, important, meaningful, but pretty average jobs, you know, um, middle ranking teachers, middle ang- ranking pe- police officers, middle ranking nurses, people who do a wonderful job, mm. but are, should not be you know, higher rate taxpayers, they should, not. They they should, should not. not be paying 40p in the no, pound. They should, they should be paying 20p in the pound. No. And yet, because the threshold where you go from being uh, a, a basic rate taxpayer to a higher rate taxpayer is frozen as wages go up, as prices go up, you are getting dragged into a higher tax bracket. That is fiscal drag. And the impact of fiscal drag is so much more powerful than the impact a, of these and it's headline tax, tax cuts. They, we call it a stealth tax, but it's a hidden tax, isn't it? It is a hidden tax. Now, And he didn't mention it yesterday in the budget He, he didn't mention it, and he should have, because it was Rishi Sunak who froze tax thresholds, and then Jeremy Hunt extended those tax threshold freeze until 2028. Now, in his defence, in Jeremy Hunt's defence, he gave an interview on the BBC Today programme this morning, and I thought it was actually a really good exchange of views, and he stuck up for himself and his policies, and it's worth... Just being fair to him for a moment here. I'm not here to do his bidding for a minute, but we deal in in facts, right? It is true that for the average worker, if you take the reduction, the combined reduction in national insurance from 12p all the way down to 8p from April, they will be better off because of those two changes, okay? But they'll still be worse off than they would have been you know, before the fiscal drag was introduced. So it all depends on your starting point. And it is true because we had a pandemic and because we've got, you know, the biggest war on the European mainland in any of our lifetimes. It is true that the public finances are very, very weak. You can't borrow 400 billion quid and lock the economy down for over a year mm. and expect the public finances to be in the same place they're not. While you're there and talking about that, let's talk about the, the OBR, the Office for Budget yeah. Responsibility, uh. because up until two or three weeks ago, the public thought, because this is what they might not understand, they thought they were going to get a massive giveaway, 30 billion plus giveaway. Headroom, suddenly, you know the expression? Headroom, 30 yeah. billion headroom. And suddenly the OBR OBR sticks its oar in, and suddenly that, that has reduced by a third. Explain to people what the OBR is and why it has so much power, especially when it gets everything so wrong. OK, back in the day of New Labour, um, when Gordon Brown first came in in the late 90s, he was a very prudent chancellor. He mm. stuck to the Tory spending plans. He was trying to kill the spectre of Labour in the 70s. You know, IMF bailouts, UK literally bankrupt, had to be had a rescue plan by, yeah, yeah. by the Americans. We all remember that. We all yeah. cut our teeth watching yeah. the telly as kids, didn't we? Gosh, this politics and journalism looks interesting. Let, let's let's get in, in, into it. So post, um, uh, when, as, as New Labour came in in the late 90s, Gordon Brown was really, really prudent. But then as he became more ambitious and frankly wanted to be prime minister, he tried to spend his way to popularity. And he started, I think it's fair to say, really tampering, tinkering, for always with the fiscal rules, he kept changing his golden rule, kept changing the goalposts. Oh, I haven't broke my golden rule. Yes, you have, Gordon. A young George Osborne was watching this. So when he came in in 2010 as Chancellor, 
he wanted to do something to stop the kind of playing fast and loose with the public finances, which, you know, I'm afraid Brown did in his later in his later years. And so he introduced the Office of Budget Responsibility separate from the Treasury, separate from political control to put forecasts out but there. How, but how good are they? Because they keep getting it wrong. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing. The OBR, particularly since what happened with Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng yeah. in the autumn of 2022, when they ignored the OBR because she was a new prime minister, sick of Treasury officialdom, sick of Whitehall, sick of the OBR, they ignored the OBR. And for all kinds of reasons, including policies that the Bank of England were doing at that time, the markets freaked out. Uh, and we all know what happened. Um, and that then, and so Jeremy Hunt, there's no way he was going to ignore the OBR. And, but I actually do think the OBR have become a bit high handed now. I do yeah. think they've taken on the sense that their forecasts are absolutely gospel. And I, I know it, it strikes me that Jeremy Hunt, he wanted to do an income tax cut of 2p that would have helped pensioners mm. landlords Could as well as not? workers and i think the obr pushed back yeah and so i think they compromised on a national and insurance cut. And he, and could, but he was spooked by what happened with trust absolutely and he was fearful that and that's why we have a boring budget could, that's yeah. not helping the people that should be helping could he not have just said bearing that probably not going to get re-elected he could have just said i'm ignoring you and went for it could no have. because whitehall now what happens if you ignore Whitehall officials? They leak to the press, they do. right? They just, we both know that. We, we all know that, right? Yeah. We've all had those calls. Yeah. Whitehall officials, if they're not getting their own way, and a lot of them are very overmighty, a lot of them think they're activists rather than officials. Mm. Sorry, it's true. They will leak stuff to the press to which damage... Is what, which, is what damage they, which is what they did to trust. Damage the yes. ministers. Yes. And if they started leaking to the press, you know, front page of the FT, you know, Hunt quotes, out of control, says OBR... Even if the financial markets didn't believe that, yeah. they would believe that every other trader would believe it, and, and it would reaction. set off a cascade of trades, people selling UK government debt, the price of that debt goes down, the yield on that debt goes up, the amount of money the government has to pay to borrow would have gone up, and we'd all be talking about nothing else. So, so we've said, Liam, this was the last budget before the election, which will come in October, November, but he could do something in an autumn statement. He could definitely yeah. do an autumn statement. I mean, some kind of spending review that include tax cuts either in the summer or the early autumn in and around conference period before a, a general election in October tax, or November. And could that tax cut come into our pockets before the next election? It certainly could. You can, you, can, you, can, you can make tax cuts very... You don't have to wait till the turn of the tax year in sure. April to do a tax change. Right. Look at what he did last November. He announced the, uh, the first 2p cut in yeah. national insurance. In and he said, I'm going to introduce it in January. And that was deliberate. So you get tax cut January, tax cut April, tax cut September. And what the Tories hope and hope and hope is that these tax cuts can combine now with incremental decreases in interest rates by the Bank of England. Right. Now, yeah. I was very much of the view that those interest rate cuts would come, right? One, two, three, spring, summer, autumn. I'm now not so sure. I'm now not so sure because you look at geopolitics, it's still nasty. You look at oil and gas prices, mm. they're creeping up. You look at inflation forecasts. Yes, inflation's probably going to come down to 2% in the summer, but there are signs in the markets it's then going to start going up again. Mm. It's interesting some of the fixed rates in the bank are already going up. The ones that exactly down. right, Carol. Yeah. Exactly right. And some of the banks put their rates up yesterday under cover of the budget. Put their borrowing costs up yesterday. Of they did. Damn. And of course, the Ukraine uh, continues. Exactly. It's not, it's, you know, we, we, we know as seasoned political commentators, it's the economy, stupid, mm. right? I would now put a twist on that. It's the geopolitics, stupid. Yeah. That's what's driving the economy, and that's what in turn is driving politics. God. Liam Halligan. He's good, isn't he? He knows his stuff <laughs> inside out. Now, okay. still to come, Malone, you've got to be careful about this. No, Those yes. refined you carbohydrates. You just stole my link there, by the way. We're, do you yeah. eat refined uh, carbohydrates? Uh, uh, yes, we had some this morning. That's why you look uglier than you did at 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> That's why we look <laughs> That's a good one. So it says, it says you look less attractive when you eat carbs for your breakfast. <laughs> yeah, but there's a difference, Carol, between you are wordsmith extraordinaire. You know the difference between less attractive and uglier. Yeah. Okay. And you went straight and for actually, uglier. I normally, <laughs> I normally have for my breakfast a banana and a yoghurt and some but raisins. Today you had all of me, that, plus she a caramel raisin. That's what you had. Because she wants to make me ugly. <laughs>